So hello! On this channel we talk about independent spirituality and folk magic for free spirits. My name is Esther and in today's video I am going to give you an altar tour. I currently have three altar spaces at home. Part of this space is dedicated to my pombagiras and my malandro, another one to my known ancestors like grandparents, aunts, uncles, etc. and one space dedicated to the family guardian. And what I want to show you with this altar tour is that an effective altar doesn't need to be anything complicated, it doesn't need to be anything fancy, you don't need to have a shitload of stuff around it, uh, on top of it. It's not about the aesthetic of the thing, it's about the altar being an effective uh, sacred space. And you don't need a lot in order to create that space. I'm gonna show you how. So let's go. So this first space here that I am showing is for my pombagiras and my malandro. And I'm gonna walk you through the items that I have on top of it. As you can see, there's nothing super fancy, nothing super elaborate. It's just about the space for placing offerings. As I have mentioned in multiple videos before, I have two pombagiras. These are for them and one malandro. I made offerings today so that's why the little uh, white uh, pots are in here. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the items that I have. So I have this little white uh, bowl for the food offerings. And I have these papers underneath with petitions with little things that I asked them. I'm not going to show that because that's super personal. But for example, I have candle holders, glass candle holders. It's exactly the same candle holder for the three of them. My two girls, they have a ring. This was a gift for them. So each one of them has a different ring. And coins. All of them have two coins right beside their space and the drinks, the drinks that they have. There's martini, there's apple cider and beer. Gift, uh, like for the girls, I gave them a ring and for the boy, I gave him a deck of cards, a deck of playing cards. And last but not least, there's an embroidered piece that I've made some time ago. I didn't have a frame for it, so I just got some sticks <laughs> and attached my embroidery to it. I didn't feel like getting an artificial uh, embroidery thing. This feels very, not only feels, it is very uh, like crafty and 100% handmade. The reason why I put uh, the cowrie shells in here is because one of my pombagiras, she used to read the shells when she was alive and it is something that I am trying to learn currently, so I thought the symbolism of it would be like just on point and perfect. I really like embroidering and this was one of the earliest projects that I've made with the little skeleton hand, uh, the curry shells and the flowers. I really like this embroidery and I think it goes perfectly on the altar right here. On this corner over here we have a space that I dedicate to the family guardian, uh, which is a spirit that has been uh, accompanying the family for a long time. I put some shells that I've collected at the beach also this stone and there's a pillar candle which I need to replace because this one is almost completely down. This is a slice of birch, birch tree and there's this little skull to symbolize uh, a spirit of an unknown person. All that I know about them is that it is a female and they used to be an indigenous person. So every now and then I put a, a little jar with water, 
I light the candle and I say some prayers. I communicate with that spirit. I thank it for being in my family for such a long time, for protecting everybody. And yeah, I leave the candle for the day. Then I um, use this, like the snuff candle snuffer. I always forget how this is called. And last but not least, I have here a little altar for my known ancestors. All of the other altars, they are also for ancestors, but more in the unknown kind of realm. So here I have actual pictures of the people. I have grandparents, I have aunt, uncles, great grandpa. Um, and I took this uh, altar design from the book Jambalaya by Louisa Tisch. So here we have four stones, one stones at each corner of this little table. We have a white candle, pictures, of deceased family members. And here there's a little glass container with something that Louisa calls spirit water. And that is water with a tablespoon of white rum. So whenever I come here to meditate with them, I light the candle, I have the spirit water there, and I use a particular uh, deck to communicate with those spirits I forgot to mention. So for the known ancestors, I use the Marigold Tarot. It's one of my favorite decks. It's all uh, based on like skulls and skeletons, just like the the beauty in, of, of death, in my opinion. And all the minor arcana is like illustrated with, um, especially the um, wand suit, it's illustrated with plants and flowers. I really like this deck and whenever it is about communicating with the like spirits of the dead also at cemeteries I like to use this one but also for my known ancestors when it comes to the the altars that I showed earlier with Pombajira, Malandro and uh, the family guardian, I like to use the Tarot Vintage, I believe is the name, or Vintage Tarot, uh, because these cards, they look very ancient. They look old, like they have been hidden, like tucked away for a hundred years and it just felt appropriate to talk to very ancient spirits using a deck that looks like it's just worn down by time and previous use you know so this is the deck that i use to communicate with the other spirits that i work with and in case you're interested like these things will be linked in the description down below you see as i have mentioned uh an effective altar doesn't need to be fancy it doesn't need to be complicated you don't need to have expensive stuff on it like i got these jars and the picture frames for like one two euro at stores nearby my house and these are stones stones that i took outside in the wild they are a little bit of like special stones because I took uh, like there's one from a different city in France there is one for, from Portugal there's one from Spain I am a rock collector I like to take stones from the places I visit <laughs> for some reason but you don't need to travel anywhere to get a stone you can just uh, walk in your neighborhood, in your local woods or whatever, whatever stone you can find. One, like you need four stones, one for each corner of a square or rectangular surface. And there you have it, an effective altar for you to do ancestor work. Also the other altars up there only takes like a candle holder, a glass for beverages, a little bowl for food offerings, and that's it, you're good to go. Y your altar doesn't need to be like a Halloween parade or something. I mean, if you like it, if it makes you happy, if you have uh, the means to have an all decorated space, by all means, 
go ahead and do it as long as it makes you happy why not right but what i'm trying to say with this video not only say but show with this video is that altars don't need to be complicated it can be as simple as grabbing stones outside a white candle and a glass with water and a little bit of white rum. So now that you've seen that altars don't need to be that complicated, how about you go ahead and set up your own? If you liked what you've seen in this video, make sure to take a look at my Patreon page and also the YouTube subscriptions, because on those platforms, I share exclusive bonus content for only one cup of coffee per month. You will find weekly divination, spell tutorials, life updates, and much more on those platforms. So make sure to take a look and see if there's anything you're interested in. As always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, practice makes perfect. So let's get rich in. Bye-bye.